One of the basic commands of Excel is to be able to pull down or pull right any of the numbers or equations that you have on the Excel sheet. So for example, uh, one possibility we have is that we have to make a long column of numbers and just in sequence from 1 up to 50 or whatever we might want to get to. If we start putting in numbers like this, 1, 2, 3, we don't actually have to go all the way up to some large number. Uh, what we can do is just select these numbers and notice down here on the right bottom portion there is a, an extra dark box. If you grab that box and your cursor turns into a plus, you can just pull that number down and you'll even see in the little side box what number you're actually at. And if you had to get to number 25, you just drag it to that point, let go of your mouse, and then you're good. Having dragged the numbers down from 1 to 25, we can now select those numbers and then noticing the dark box in the bottom right, we can now drag to the right. And you see that the box fills up a duplicate of columns across the area that we dragged it. If we have a scenario in which our data is set up in a column and we need to change it to a row or vice versa, we are going to use the transpose paste function. To work with this, for example, let's say we have a series of letters, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Having this data, we have to switch it into a row. All we have to do is select the information that we have come to the location where we need to place it after copying it, place our cursor in a cell, right click and then use the transpose paste function which has those two arrows on it. And then our data automatically show up as one row rather than the original column. And the reverse is also true. If we have this data, copy it, come to a new cell, place it down, and then right click and then use transpose paste again, it will return it into its columnar form. Suppose we are working with some data that are going to have equations associated with them data, the numbers themselves, and equations will be transferred through copy and pasting differently and this is something you need to attend to. So for example, let's start off with a set of sample data, one through five. Very simple, no formula involved. Now in the next column what we're going to do is put in a tiny equation that says we're going to take whatever is in column C and we're going to add the number 5 to it. Of course 1 plus 5 is equal to 6. That's simple. If we copy that cell and drag it down and use control D then we'll see that the equation in each instance always takes what's in column C, adds 5 to it, and then we have our answer. Now if we were to take these final numbers that we wanted and we wanted to paste them somewhere else and all we did was copy them and then move them somewhere else, we would find that we'd wind up with a bunch of fives. Why? Well, if you take a look at the equation that we copied over, it said take F4, whatever's in F4, and add 5 to it. But that's not what we originally wrote, but that's how Excel works. An equation identifies the cell next to it, and then you want to add 5 to it. So the original equation was add 5 to whatever is in the cell next to it. Because we move this equation over here, it's looking for a number right next to it. There's nothing in column F, therefore it's a 0, so it adds 5 to 0, 
in every single instance, we wind up with a 5 as an answer. But that wasn't what we intended. What we intended to do is to take the results of these equations and move them somewhere else. To be able to do so, we have to use the values function. So if we take these data and copy them, and then find the location where we want to place them, click into that cell, right click on our mouse, and then we'll see this icon here with the one, two, three on it. That gives you values, but no equation. Notice here, the value in that cell is six, but there is no equation. Seven, eight, nine, ten. No equation at all, only the answer itself. This is important when you calculate information and you want to take that data without the equation to another location in your spreadsheet and carry on with your calculations. In some instances, you may have a set of data with an equation and the number. Now, you may need to take this information, move it somewhere else, and also transpose paste it. That has to be done in two separate steps. So for example, if we took this information, copied it, we could move it over here, and if we just tried to transpose paste it, we would find that there's going to be a problem because we pulled the equation along and it's not calculating things properly. To do this in two steps, we have to take the original data, copy it, move it over as a value first, and place it down. Now, this information will then undergo a transpose paste. We now select it, copy it, place it where we need it to be, right click, and then use the transpose paste function. And now we have our original data, which was in a column, created by an equation, moved over as the data itself without the equation, and then transpose paste into the uh, location that we needed it to be in. Now let's take a look at the rand between function. Rand between is an Excel function that gives you a randomly selected number between two values that you place in the parentheses. So for example, you can see it by starting off with equals ran between, putting in the left parentheses, and then choosing the two numbers that you want to select a random number between. Let's say between 1 and 10. Close the parentheses and hit enter. Excel has given us the randomly selected number 7. If we select this box, copy it, and drag it down, we'll have a bunch of selections of random numbers between 1 and 10. Notice that each number in this column does not exceed 10 or go below 1. If we took each of these numbers, copied them, and then also dragged them to the right, we would continue to have a set of data, all with numbers randomly selected between the numbers 1 and 10. The value of this function allows us to generate artificial data to work with, and you'll be doing so in some of your homework assignments to generate information and then to analyze it afterward. Suppose now that we want to graph some data. One thing you need to know initially in Excel is that to graph data, you always have to have your data in a column, never in a row. If you try to graph your data in a row, Excel simply will not accept it. Now you might imagine that if you have X and Y values and you select them, you can make a graph pretty easily. Um, and if we walk through these steps, you'll see that having selected the data, you can just go to your insert function, pick a type of chart, let's just pick a line chart, and then you'll wind up seeing your graph appear. But the graph is all messed up. 
Here you, you're actually looking at these values for your x and these values for your y, but then Excel plotted your x values and your y values separately. Whenever you make a graph, we'll get rid of this, you only, you have to focus only on the set of data that would be the y values. At that point, you can insert and you can use a number of different functions here. The only ones that are value for our class are a scatter plot, which you could select, or you could adjust it by just reselecting a line graph, or switch back to a scatter plot, which is the way I'll leave it. Having made that chart, one of the things that you have to do is, of course, label your x and y axes. That is a simple process. Select your graph, and then you'll see a chart design tab appear. All the way over on the left-hand side, you'll find chart elements. If you want to add a axis title to your primary horizontal axis, then it'll appear here. So you could just select all of this and then name it whatever way you wish. And you do the same thing with the y-axis as well. As long as the graph has been selected and you have the chart design tab, you can come over to add chart element, axis title, now primary vertical. And once you get in there, because this is written vertically, um, you just have to select the information in there. And you're good. If you need to move it, just slide your cursor to reduce the X, and then you can drag it to wherever you need it to be. The chart title is an easier one. You can just click on that, select everything inside there, and then name your graph. Whatever it needs to be named. One of the next things that we commonly do to present information is to place a trend line on your graph. You have probably seen trend lines in the past, and the most common one is a linear format. So again, making sure that we have selected our uh, chart, go to Chart Design, come over to Chart Elements, and then find Trend Line. There's a variety of options here. Let's just start with linear. Linear is the one that you would immediately recognize that you probably used in a high school science class before. It just gives you a straight line that tries to fit the data to the best statistical rule that it can. If you double click on that trend line, you'll have some other options. There are variations. In fact, these data, you may notice, are not very linear, but they're curvilinear. And so you want to try some of the other curvilinear options like exponential or logarithmic or polynomial or power. Those are the only ones you would use for our class. To know which trend line actually fits your data best statistically, you want to come down to the bottom here and display the equation and the R-square value onto the figure itself. You can select that. Slide your cursor over to make a, a, a cross, and then you'll find the R-square value. Uh, you have probably already learned the R-square value is related to the Pearson correlation coefficient, and it tells you how good the trend line fits the data. What you're really looking for in a practical sense is the highest number that you can get here. So if we come back to the trend line, uh, we can change it, now that the uh, equation and the R-square value is going to be presented each time, and we'll find the highest uh, R-square value. So for exponential, we have an R-square value of 0.97. That's pretty high. Linear drops to 77. We don't want that. Logarithmic is up to 94, but that was not as good as the 0.97 we had before that. Uh, let's look at the power. We'll skip polynomial. Look at the power function, and that only gives us a R-square value of 0.83. Ignore moving average, 
So that means of our options from exponential to linear to logarithmic and power, exponential gives us the best fit. And that's where you would just stop at this point because you now found the equation that predicts the data best. 